Um, a guy who we haven't talked about, who I find just fascinating, uh, is named Santorio Santorio. It's the the researchers so nice they named him twice. Santorio Santorio. Yes. Yes. Take it, Chuck. Uh, well, he was a self experimenter and one of the the earlier self experimenters. Um, we're talking 16th century style, and uh, what he did is he wanted to find out about, and I guess they didn't call it metabolism at the time, did they? No, he he it later ended up being the study. Okay, yeah, back then they were they had no idea. But basically, stupid. that's what he was doing was kind of learning about the human metabolism, and he did so by uh, being very meticulous about recording what he eat eated, mm -hmm. <laughs> what he ate, the and what he boys. drank, and uh, weighing his stools and his urine. Mm -hmm. And I guess that he formed some equation: what comes in, what goes out. Well, he found that it doesn't equal. Well, sure. And you you can't take into account the weight you put on. There's still some um, difference. And he wanted to figure out where that went, and he came up with the idea of insensible perspiration. Which I thought was going to be all about sweat, so I was a little disappointed. Well, it is. Yeah, but really? But I mean, it's just like constant little sweat. I guess so. <laughs> you lose weight like that. But the, the cool thing about Santorio Squared is that um, he lived for 30 years, Chuck, Essentially, he on this, this for thirty machine. years. Yeah, every oh, wow. every day, every every single day for thirty years, and he basically lived on this machine. It was like huge beam scale, uh -huh. and he constructed like a little chair and like a, a work table and all that. And he weighed all the food and drink that came on, and he weighed all the poop and urine that went off. But he lived on this thing. Well, and what's sad is that he did all this, and it really wasn't super useful. No, but... It again, opened the doors, though, for things it, like this. It definitely did. Yeah. And um, one, one of the other things it did was um, he had the idea of insensible perspiration before he did this. So he was one of the first people to say, you know what, I'm not just going to say something. I'm going to subject this to scientific rigor. I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. I'm going to live my on poop. A, a scale <laughs> and weigh my poop. <laughs> Yeah, he's like a, a stockbroker in the 80s looking for brand, you know? <laughs> so that's number one. Uh, number two, we come to 1803, is a little bit of a jump there, to Frederick Wilhelm Adam Sertürner. Mm -hmm. And um, what he ended up doing was actually pretty useful yeah. for everyone, even today. Yes. Because he, did he discover yes. morphine? He isolated it. Isolated it from opium. Yeah. And Through basically, 52 steps. Got a few friends together. Well, first he tested it on animals until they started dying. Yeah. Sleeping and dying. <laughs> right. And then he was like, well, maybe I should try this on people and see what happens. Yeah. Because he said um, that uh, animals do not give exact results. I guess that's true. Right. So he and his 17-year-old friends give exact results. All those dying is a pretty exact result. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So he OD'd a bunch of animals. Then he got three, uh, you pointed out, 17-year-olds plus himself. I think he was like 20 at the time. He was? So that's like right in the wheelhouse still today, I think. <laughs> yeah, he's middle age back then, though. Yeah. Uh, and so he dosed the, uh, himself and his friends on a low dose at first, about a half a grain of morphine, which is 30 mgs. Oh, yeah, it's a comparatively low dose to what he took. Right. And that produced a little flushing. He was like, hey, this is kind of neat, but I'm, I'm <laughs> looking for more than flushing, so let me take a little more. Yeah. After about 15 minutes, took a similar dose. Started feeling a little queasy and faint and sleepy, of course. Yeah. And to the point where I guess he thought it might be getting a little dangerous, so he threw up, made all his friends throw up to get it out of their system. Well, yeah, he started to get a little worried that they were all going to die because like they'd the taken 90 milligrams of morphine in less than an hour, which today we realize is 10 times the recommended <laughs> yeah, dose. Exactly. So, yeah, he... he, um, he Gave everybody like eight ounces of vinegar to drink and made them throw up and save their lives. Yeah, I imagine they probably would have OD'd, huh? Yeah. And then he did another experiment later because he had a toothache and he found that if he just took opium for it, the toothache wasn't cured, but if he took some morphine, it was cured. Oh, I thought he discovered that by accident. Like he was like, wait a minute, my toothache's gone. No, he kept going. This is okay. not the only experiment. Like he gotcha. had like many, many brushes with death. As far as self-experimenting scientists go, he was probably one of the um, one of the toughest ones, or at least most, or the, the most one, able to take a lot of drugs. Right. The one most addicted to morphine. That's right. Yeah. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit howstuffworks.com. 